provisions of the constitution what? of india we are not amending the applicable in the relation one, to the one, state one, one. you are not amending the constitution you are not amending the constitution of the constitution of india otherwise we'll see the danger of this argument tomorrow malas parliament says that we are the constituent assembly they can do away with basic structure the constituent power itself of parliament to amend the constitution is a political power i agree entirely absolutely right we're not saying you can't amend this one question the proviso to sex article 147 of the jnk constitution yes. says that no bill or amendment seeking to make change in the provisions of the constitution of india is applicable in relation to a state yes means a change in the constitution of india whereas whereas as per clause 3 of article 370 it's a it's not it's not the amendment which is applicable as per that it's the consent or the consultation or the recommendation neither consent nor consent. it's a recommendation no of the is, of the legis the let, let's see the 373 let's see 373 yes, so really speaking under 247 may have no application as well because you're not seeking to amend 370 but enforce 370 let's assume let's for the for the time being substitute the words constituent assembly for legislative assembly on the recommendation yeah let's assume so yeah let's assume. Yeah. let's assume let's substitute you're right yeah, like, recommendation correct yeah, like. let's substitute that word provided that the recommendation of the legislative assembly for the state referred to shall be necessary before the president issues such notification yeah. so really 147 will not be will not be applicable in case the state uh, legislature makes that recommendation no matter kindly see the what 147 says is the provisions of the constitution what? of india we are not amending the applicable in the relation one, to the one, state one, one. you're not amending the constitution you're not amending the constitution of the constitution of india let's for the time being let's read as it is because what is barred in the proviso to 147 is amendment seeking to make a change in the provisions of the constitution of india as applicable in relation to the as in applicable in relation which is, which to the which is state. why 370 is incorporated malad in the constitution of jammu and kashmir as it stood then that's what it that's the application order So you have a clear distinction between the exercise of constituent power and the exercise of legislative power which is what i said in the beginning to your lordships parliament while enacting a law functions within the contours of the constitution a constituent assembly has no constitution in place it has every right to do what it likes till such time as the constitution is framed so at no point in time in law can a legislative assembly be converted into a constituent assembly as a matter of law luckily we had no maharaja exercising his powers because we had parliament doing that and now when parliament even when parliament amends the constitution yes it's not exercising powers as a constituent assembly that's correct it may be exercising a constituent power that's correct the power to amend but because it's a power which is restricted you are subservient to the constitution yes right. therefore you are bound by the provisions of the constitution by virtue of which your power to amend the constitution is circumscribed that's what i said at the outset malus that has been my submission throughout otherwise malus see the danger of this argument tomorrow malus parliament says that we are the constituent assembly they can do away with basic structure uh, dr ambedkar also spoke he spoke about it in his speech on 25th of november 1949 I'm sorry, but I didn't get your note. Dr. Ambedkar, yes, while presenting the final draft, yes, on 25th of November 1949, yeah, also spoke about this aspect. Yes, yes. In his yes, I think we have it. I think we have it. I think in volume eight. I just come to that. Look, the point I'm making is a more fundamental point, which impacts the future of of our of our country. If you, in principle, say that a parliament can convert itself into a constituent assembly, then where do we go? from there forget about this case i am far more worried about our future parliament can never say that because that constituent assembly is a political process which i said at the beginning it's a political process in the context of the aspirations 
of all those participating in the constituent assembly as to what the state should be like. Mr. Sibal, to completely divorce the power of amendment from the political process inherent in the amending power. Yes, of course. Would not be appropriate because yes. there is no there is no strict dichotomy in that sense Absolutely. between the exercise of the constituent power itself being traceable to the political process and the power of a constituent assembly being entirely political in its nature. The constituent power itself of parliament to amend the constitution is a political power. I agree entirely. Absolutely right. We're not saying you can't amend. Because it's not our case. You can. But when Parliament amends according to you, yes. it is not exercising the powers of a constituent assembly. That's all that I'm saying. That's all that I'm saying. It's not converting itself. And then it has to function within the constitution of India. But come to that later. We're at a stage, mothers, where a CO is issued. The which constituent assembly is untrammeled. That's right. It's as if it is working on a clean slate. That's correct. Absolutely. Absolutely, Manas. And it say, the judgment says so, Manas. That is not bound by anything. Bound by the, the, the representatives of the Constituent Assembly who have common aspirations to draft a constitution for the future of the people of the country. Which is why diversity, protection are fundamental to our constitution. For this reason, this very reason. So you want to take away that that's very dangerous. I'm not Malas being political, but that's that's the worrisome part. May I reach 620 months? 20. So Malas, when your lordships talk about temporary Malas, really you have to look at the constitution. Because it had to be temporary in, in 1950. There were no element of permanency, it could not have been. This is a marginal note. The There's no side. question about it. It is a marginal note. Yes. So Malas, you can't be saying which is what is your lordships are concerned with, but it was temporary. But that's only when you look at the marginal note. It had to be temporary because there was no other way to deal with it. You couldn't have said it is permanent. But there's no doubt still about the fact that this forms a part of part 21 of the constitution, which still deals with temporary and... But those are provisions. Mother, that I, I'm not disputing that. These are all different provisions, Mother. If your eye look... They're all being clubbed together in part I, 21. That's correct. But we, we looked at it in the context of, Mother, what was going to happen in the northeastern regions. Gujarat and Maharashtra together, what was to happen there. Issues of Marathwada. So those councils had to be created. Boards had to be created. That's why they were temporary. Telangana. That's why they were temporary. Not for any other reason. And that's why this was also temporary. It's the same logic. But the fact that it is temporary doesn't mean that the article is temporary for all time to come. You can't interpret the marginal note in that fashion. You look at the heading, Miller, it says temporary and transitional provisions. So two is temporary and three, two is transitional and three is temporary. It's 368 power, right? In this case, no, 356 power. No, it's 356 because they converted. What happened? Well, let me just in one sentence. They can. They say. In one sentence, I'll tell you what they did. They converted the legislative assembly into the constituent assembly. Well, dissolved. They converted it into a constituent assembly. Then they said that now parliament, because of 356, parliament is exercising that power. So the parliament is the legislature. And because it's a constituent assembly, Parliament of India is the constituent assembly, and therefore we can do what we do. That's in one sentence what they did. And they recommend it to themselves. So instead of clapping by two hands, they clapped by one hand. Because they exercise the power of the legislature themselves. And because the legislature's consent was necessary to give that consent to themselves. And uh, abrogated 370. Unique, well, it's a constitutionally a unique unheard of, a procedure that is unknown to law, because the objective was entirely different. And I've been saying that from day one. To apply the proviso to clause 3 of article 370. Yes, yeah, because they understood it that way that it required and, the previous. And then what they do is, they say that uh, the parliament exercise exercising the powers of the uh, constituent assembly, yes. by virtue of the fact that the, uh, the, the, the legislative assembly has been dissolved, yeah. Assuming that the legislative assembly was not dissolved, 
that could have exercised the power of the constituent assembly that's right now that it has been dissolved yes uh the, under 356 parliament has the power to make laws with all aspects of whether it's right. list 1 list 2 or list 3 and then they they they, they exercise the power under the proviso that's, that's right that's right so mother they actually they understood 370 sub article 3 in the manner in which i am mother stating before your lordship it is their understanding right till the end they don't understand which is why i want you to bring it at this stage mother so that now your lordship knows mother the large cons the larger picture so to say so we are going into interpretation of 370 sub article 3 which they themselves accept that the proviso applies 